Welcome to the first fun chapter of data manipulation in Python. The admin is all done, so now we can jump in and actually play with the data. In this chapter, we're going to run through finding and loading data sets, creating your own and saving them out, and then how to inspect them, both using textual methods and how to plot the data in them in effective ways. All right, so let's first talk about how to find and load data sets in. In this course, I've primarily tried to use data from Kaggle. Kaggle is a fantastic resource that I encourage everyone to use, especially if you're looking to build up a portfolio in, let's say, the data science world. That doesn't mean that Kaggle is the only resource you have at your fingertips. Kaggle is simply one of the largest and most established ones. So it's a great place for practice and especially the challenges. I encourage you, if you're looking to build up a portfolio, to find some of the Kaggle challenges and just give them a go. Not only will you learn valuable skills, but you'll also be able to see the kernel submitted by other users if the challenge that you're working on has passed its end date. So I encourage you to do those ones because you can learn from what other people have done. Kaggle normally has data that's been pre-formatted for you, so it's easy to load in, easy to work with, but that's generally not how data in real life always works. If you want something a bit closer to a real world application, I would say learn some basic SQL and you can find plenty of open sources and open databases online that you can write queries for, submit and download the data. That gives you tons of practice working with data, just like how you'd find extracted from a database, merging them all together, super handy to learn, Obviously, not as easy to get started though as working with Kaggle. There's often also plenty of data in the form of survey responses. I would generally say to stay away from these because most surveys are freeform or open design. That is, they contain text elements where people can write in whatever they want and generally requires a vast amount of human resources to go through and categorize the results. Numeric surveys, that's fine and that's all right, but often the data is still super contaminated. If you want to get away from Kaggle, SQL, you don't want to use surveys, well, there are plenty of sites like Kaggle, uh, Driven Data, Crowd Analytics, uh, Inocentive, Code Lab, Crowd AI, Data Hack. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these. You can literally just Google search sites like Kaggle. You'll get a huge list. Some of them have different focuses, but they're all great places to just find a data set and practice your skills. Moving on, what do you do once you actually have a data set? There are, fortunately, a whole bunch of options. Uh, number one is you can manually write in Python a function to load in your data. You can open the file and go through it line by line, extract the data you want, and then close the file. But try to never do this. Manually loading a file should be the absolute last resort for files that refuse to follow any sort of sane file format. Ideally, any one of the other functions in here would serve just as well. They'll load the data in faster, better, and in more formats that are useful to you. NumPy provides a few different ways of doing this. They have NumPy load text, and this is for loading in simple homogeneous files, generally files that were created using NumPy.save text. If you need something with a bit more freedom, NumPy has gen from text, and that's essentially their version of a CSV reader. But I would say don't use either of those. I'm letting you know they exist so that you know what's out there. But try to always use pandas read CSV. Why? Well, not only is this a course focused on pandas, but it handles so much more than NumPy. It can do so much more and it is incredibly, incredibly robust and incredibly useful. Now, if your data doesn't come in a textual format, things do get a little bit more difficult. It's quite rare, but it can happen. If your file comes as a pickle, you can use Python's pickle library or just pandas.read underscore pickle. If it comes as an HDF5 database, well, then you can use pandas.read underscore HD5. Uh, there's Feather, there's Message Pack. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways. Hopefully, if you get a file that isn't text and it's some sort of binary format, you do have instructions to load them in because it can get very messy very quickly. All right, that's enough talking, I think. It's easier to show how these things work if you actually code along. So let's end this lecture here. I'll start up a notebook and we can do the next part interactively.